Hello and welcome everyone to this Kensington webinar, The Green Shoots of Recovery in the Mortgage Market. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm Frances Taylor, Head of National Accounts, and I'm joined by my boss, Craig McKinley, our new business director. So once again, thank you for joining us. You may have been with us a few weeks ago for our previous webinar, which was COVID-19 and the impact on the specialist market with a focus on specialist funding. Um, some great feedback from that, some of which was around um, the positive impacts of what's happened and how we can turn that into opportunity. So that's really what we're going to focus on today. So just to set the scene for you, we're going to do a recap on what's happened so far. Uh, we're then going to really focus on the house purchase life cycle and how it's been affected. So uh, we'll look all the way through the journey, but then have a, a focus on new build, brokers, valuation and then lenders. Uh, Craig will then do a quick update on our Kensington proposition and then we have some pre-submitted questions, thank you for those, um, which we will cover at the end. So I'll hand over to Craig now for a market update. Great, thank you Francis. Um, so I'll quickly look at what happened at the start of the crisis before we move on to talk about the positive signs we're seeing of recovery. So uh, incredible, really. I mean, a lot of this feels like old news now, um, but it was an incredible amount of activity in a very short period of time and some very dramatic changes with the Bank of England reducing base rates twice down to 10 basis points and the lowest rate uh, we've ever seen. Uh, the government effectively telling people not to move house, which kind of killed the house move market. Furlough and self-employed government schemes, which is something we've never seen before and, and lots uh, for brokers and lenders and customers to get their heads around what does furloughing mean, what is, uh, what's, what, what, how the government schemes help. Payment holidays, again, something we've, we've never seen before uh, on mass scale, um, so people trying to get used to that. Um, no physical valuations effectively can be done um, because of the social distancing requirements and then issues with the Scottish Land Registry not being able to actually register new completions and then even re repossessions and evictions being put on hold. So an incredible amount of very um, dramatic um, activity in a very short period of time. Worth noting, this was all done in, in a couple of weeks, whereas the financial crisis had a similar kind of impact, but that really unfolded over about 12 to 18 months, whereas this happened in a two or three week period, which is fairly staggering. So huge impact um, on the house housing market in particular, um, but the good news is we think we're now starting to see some signs of recovery. So as we go on to the next couple of slides, you will see that um, we're going to walk through the house purchase life cycle and how it's been affected. So um, what we'll do is we'll talk about all the way from a house being built all the way through an estate agent then selling that property, um, a customer then applying for a mortgage with a mortgage broker, the lender then dealing with that application, uh, the surveyor then going out to do evaluation or, or not going out to do evaluation as is, as is the case, um, conveyancing still working pretty much as normally um, and then in, input from the government. So we'll basically walk through the whole customer process um, and we'll particularly focus on those um, orange blocks at the bottom, so builders, brokers, lenders, and surveyors, which we'll go through in a couple of seconds. But the good news is all the way across the purchase journey, we've seen some, some good signs that the market is starting to thaw a little bit and get back to normal to a certain extent. So if we look at estate agents, estate agents are still um, able to do valuations and they've stopped, we've seen more valuations being done uh, where they've gone to value properties um, that are unoccupied. We've seen a huge increase in the provision of some of the technology for things like virtual viewings, which is, can be really effective and has actually given some customers the confidence to actually put offers in on houses they haven't physically viewed themselves because the technology now is so good and you can get a really good feel for the property with some of the virtual walkthroughs you can do. And we've actually seen auctions performing well as well. So uh, quite, quite a high amount of auction sales being done, even though uh, in some circumstances, people haven't actually uh, viewed the property themselves. And then from a customer point of view, 
we've seen a big increase in the last couple of weeks in right move and things and Zoopla and things like virtual property searches, maybe because people are bored sitting at home with not much else to do, but it does show signs of demand at the, right at the start of the purchase funnel. Uh, we've also seen professional landlords looking for deals, so kind of bargain hunters looking to expand their portfolios, potentially at a knockdown price, which has driven some of the auction activity we've seen. And then we've seen customers utilising payment holidays. So about one in five customers are using a payment holiday, which is something that was um, pretty much unheard of previously, so a huge change. Uh, and then we'll talk about brokers, lenders and surveyors in more detail in a second. And then on the conveyancing side, thankfully the Scottish Land Registry has um, opened up again with a new digital solution. So um, completions can be registered, which is great. And conveyancing just generally is open for business. Um, activities going away the way through. We've done quite a lot of completions in the last few weeks. So it's at, you know that's all working relatively close to normal. And then lots of input from the government so there's rumors that help to buy may be extended which would be fantastic um, with Boris's latest announcement specifically calling out that construction workers should go back to work we're really seeing some some signs of um, activity to start to get to that the market moving again which is really good I'll hand back to Francis now to talk about a particular focus on new build Brilliant, thank you very much, Craig. So yeah, firstly, we wanted to focus on new builds. I mean, it's such a huge part of the industry. In 1819, we bought, we built 240,000 new houses in the UK. So it feels like a really relevant place for us to start within the uh, within the life cycle. So um, a few weeks ago, it feels like months to, to many now, the government um, issued guidelines um, around uh, what we could be doing and working on construction sites. I think after some initial confusion some most, from most, we started seeing the large sites close down and stop completely. Now, some builders have continued to work throughout the crisis and uh, we are seeing, which is really encouraging, uh, and introduce a phased approach to coming back to uh, working on site. Now, to be able to do that, there's a few things that uh, need to be uh, put through a process. So RICs have agreed new protocols with builders to allow them to safely return to value the sites. But those construction sites and the sales offices on them also have to be modified to allow for uh, social distancing measures. So that's all been done. We're seeing people coming back. We're also seeing the early signs of land acquisition deals resuming, which is really encouraging. So buying up uh, new land to build new sites on. Kind of in the lender world, we've seen some lenders allow desktop valuations for new build properties, not all, but some. Um, and that's at kind of from 75% loan to value. So that's really good. Um, and then from the technology side, obviously there's been um, a phenomenal response in terms of what we can do now but what we're seeing the builders do is evolve within technology and their processes to find new ways to sell products and the development themselves our builders are also working with brokers and surveyors to ensure that there's an efficient and secure way to value the properties and sell mortgages going going forward uh, Craig uh, briefly mentioned uh, the Help to Buy scheme and discussions around extending uh, the existing scheme. Obviously, the loss of time on building sites and not being able to, to build new houses um, means that we've lost that time. So to, in order to compensate for that, it's wanting to be extended also, obviously, to stimulate demand generally. So if we move on now to a focus on brokers. So what I wanted to do is look at where we are right now and the challenges kind of we're facing and that, but then really focus on um, what opportunity that creates for us. So, I mean, even as a lender, let alone as a broker, keeping up to date with all the changes from lenders around product and criteria has been um, difficult to say the least. Uh, we've seen COVID hubs uh, being built from intermediaries, which have been fantastic support 
for, for brokers generally. Um, and then our focus and kind of what we're actually having to do with customers change. So looking at existing cases and the changing in lenders uh, processes and what we need to do for them. And then the payment holiday requests. I mean, here at Kensington, we're seeing thousands and thousands of calls um, regarding payment holidays. And of course, uh, you guys, the brokers are receiving those as well. So a big focus on free mortgage, product transfers and protection, obviously. So what does this all mean? What opportunity does that create? So, I mean, at this time, customers are so, so confused about what their options are. And more now than ever, they need the help of their broker to guide them to find the correct solution. If we nurture and really work on those relationships now, it's only going to help us in the long term. I saw a stat recently where 70% of all mortgage applications are done by a broker. If you look at the specialist market, when it gets that little bit more difficult, 100% of applications are actually done by a broker. So I think we'll just see that, that number going up and up going forward. So diversifying income streams, obviously we've been um, focusing a lot on mortgage and product transfers, but protections definitely come back into focus um, and speaking to our customers about their changing needs. Another, another part of the um, industry is later life. So where before we were seeing a requirement for brokers and uh, for customers to take equity out of their, their home, typically for home improvements or a holiday, which would be very, very nice right now. This now becomes the need to help their children either with a property or maybe a business has failed um, due to COVID-19 and, and the impact that it's had. So lots of changing needs for customers there, absolutely, which we can, we can help with. And then we look at the new normal. So virtual working, I don't think I've ever done so many video conference calls um, as I have uh, in these past few weeks, but the, the new functions and seeing technology evolve like Zoom and Microsoft Teams has been quite phenomenal really. Um, increased use of social media uh, with colleagues and with customers, so LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, is a brilliant way of connecting and keeping up to date with the industry. I think if you check your uh, screen time now on your mobile phone, it's probably the highest that it's um, ever been. Uh, so yeah, uh, we also have, um, you may have had events and conferences that have been penciled into um, your diary that have now been cancelled or postponed. Some of these are now become virtual, which when I've looked at um, some of the ways some of these are done by going into different rooms and being able to engage in different ways, it really, really is brilliant. So again, the opportunity and what does that mean? So working from home obviously has its benefits for kind of time and cost saving, but it also offers another way to interact with clients. I was speaking with a broker last week who normally actually always did 100% of their uh, customer appointments on the telephone instead of face to face, but have actually now started doing some of those um, via video as well. Um, online events, obviously being able to continue with education and upskilling, CPD, we still all need our CPD hours, which obviously you're getting 30 minutes for this as well, which is good, but this is just going to change how we learn in the future. And then lastly, I guess with the quiet period, everyone just has a chance to reflect and analyse on how we do business. We're seeing firms become a lot leaner and more productive. And I think the way that we work now and continue to work has, has probably changed forever. So I will hand over to Craig to have a focus on surveyors and valuations. Great, thanks Francis. So uh, we just wanted to clarify the different types of valuations that are available at the moment. So a lot of people talk about desktops and um, AVMs interchangeably. So we just wanted to clarify what, what they are and, and how, how they both get used. So everyone's obviously very familiar with the physical valuation because that, that is the, the kind of the standard of the industry. Um, so a desktop valuation, and the reason a desktop valuation is different to an automated valuation. So a desktop valuation is performed by a RICS qualified surveyor who will use a combination of uh, online data sources such as Rightmove, Zoopla. They'll use comparable tools to look at um, recent property sales. They'll typically be local to the area that they're, they're doing the valuation on. So they've got lots of their own personal local area knowledge um, and they can use other tools like uh, Street View, et cetera. So they'll pull all that information together 
to give a valuation of the property and you know we feel that's fairly robust because it's a surveyor who knows the area and is using their own knowledge but coupled with lots of lots of uh, intelligent tools uh, and potentially also um, not for remortgage but for purchase they'll be able to look at the house particulars if there's a property for sale to see the inside of the property which uh, which is great because normally they wouldn't be able to do that with a desktop valuation an automated valuation is something that's quite different so this is purely no human interaction at all so this is a mathematical model that looks at all the databases um, all different things of different property transactions loads of different um, analytical inputs to try and work out the value of a property um, and that will come out with an estimate of the valuation and a confidence level so that would have a high confidence level for um, a property that's quite similar to all the properties around it and there's lots of um, recent um, in-depth evidence of other property being sold for um, similar amounts so lots of transaction data where you have a property that is different to the other properties that surround it or in the local area and there hasn't been many recent transactions that would give a low level of confidence so they're the kind of three different levels um, and it's great to have the ability to have three different kind of choices of how you value a property for a lender because they all have pros and cons um, and they all have different circumstances where we can use them uh, either together or separately so in terms of considerations for customers brokers and lenders of when you would use each method so typically a physical valuation is very important for a high ltv property uh, and that's quite hard to do in an avm or a desktop has fairly low level of confidence as if you wanted to get to say 95 loan to value you typically want a physical valuation You'd also typically want a physical valuation because you want someone to see inside um, an HMO or a MUB um, and also a new build to, to see the build quality and how that build's progressing. And also there is some limitations on depend on uh, lenders' internal systems, so how they get the data in. So they're all set up for physical valuations to move to an AVM or desktop may cause a lender some issues on their systems. And then as I mentioned, you've got the risk factors. So um, very high levels of confidence and accuracy with the physical valuation desktops um, somewhere in the middle then an ABM has the least level of um, accuracy and confidence um, and also things like we get personal indemnity cover for um, a RIC surveyor which you wouldn't get on an ABM so that's something that also a lender has to bear in, bear in mind then speeds will vary will um, vary as well so AVMs can be done very very quickly because it's fully automated desktops uh, typically can, as you'd expect can be done quicker than um, a physical valuation because no one has to book in to go and see the property um, so they also tend to be quicker and then the cost so an AVM no human interactions tends to be very cheap desktops somewhere in the middle and then physicals typically around 300 pounds um, but what you'll see at the extremes are a low LTV customer with with a low risk kind of property um, people were very very comfortable to do a very fast super cheap AVM on that um, but then at the other extreme typically with a high LTV higher risk type of property or product you'll absolutely want a physical valuation which will take longer to do and cost a bit more uh, but hopefully that just gives a bit of clarity because that's something we get a lot of questions um, about with is is what are the different options for lenders and how do they vary so hopefully that helps with that if we now move on to look at what's been happening um, with lenders in the marketplace so again with lenders there's been um, lots of activity lots of kind of green shoots of recovery um, you can see the right hand chart there is the amount of products in the market so the total line is the blue line at the top and you can see there's been a you really might struggle to see it but there's been a slight increase so it declined very quickly and then flatlined for a little bit um, but there is now a few more products in the market uh, which is really good uh, we've seen lenders return to the market which is fantastic because some, some lenders stopped lending um, big impact for lenders has been payment holidays so as I mentioned before one in five loans are now on a payment holiday we've talked about the difference in uh, funding and valuation and people having to get used to um, 
new systems and trying to do things differently. Um, but on the positive side, we've actually seen applications and completions rise in the last couple of weeks. We've seen more activity at the front of the pipeline, whether that's more um, customers looking at Rightmove or Zoopla for properties, um, but we've actually seen more applications and completions rise. You'll see with the bottom uh, two charts, remortgage has done particularly well because it hasn't needed typically, has, has been less reliant on physical valuations um, and can go all the way through from application to completion. Um, without evaluation, so that's that's been been going very strongly, and we've seen up to 80% of the market. So the share of of remortgages completely changed. Um, we've seen lenders increase their LTVs. A lot of people retrenched back to maybe 60% loan to value at the start of the crisis, um, and we've seen lots of lenders go back to 70, 75, 80, sometimes even higher in some circumstances, which is fantastic. A new product range is launched, lots of change in it, changes in criteria um, as people adjust their criteria to, to uh, take into account things like furlough income and payment holidays and what does that mean, how do, how do people assess that. Um, and then we've talked about non-physical valuation solutions, so a huge amount has been happening with um, lenders to um, to try and adjust to the new set of circumstances and it, you know the good news is we're coming out the other side of that now. There is more products available. There is higher LTVs. There is new ways of valuing. So it's all starting to look a bit more positive as we now uh, move on and look to the future for lenders. So <clears throat> in terms of what ourselves and other lenders are looking at, um, I think big question about when we come out of the crisis, what will the customer needs look like? How will they have changed? People have been on payment holidays, they've been on furlough, we've never had these circumstances before. So what does that mean? Do we need new products? Do we need to think about what we, how we approach that? What does it mean for self-employed people who potentially have been impacted quite hard? So we need to consider, have we got the right type of products? Um, have we got the right type of LTVs? What does it mean for new build? So real, let's analyze the customer circumstances and make sure um, our proposition um, and our criteria um, suits that new set of circumstances because it's really important that we have the right set of products for customers. I think on the positive side, there's been a real focus and increase in digital capability from lenders. So AVMs, desktops, lots of technological innovation to try and get through the crisis, electronic ID and V, um, potentially that will speed up um, offer. I don't think that's happening yet, but I think it will in the future. Most lenders are working from home, which is great because, you know, certainly we didn't have that capability before. We have 500 people who are now working from home. Most of them couldn't work from home beforehand, so that's really good. And everyone's got used to using new tools such as Zoom and Teams, um, which is brilliant. And the key thing is, um, I think the key thing is when we come out of this crisis is not to lose a lot of that so we'll have a whole lot of new capability that we didn't have going into the crisis which we expect to retain so we'll continue to do um, digital um, engagement we'll continue to use things like AVMs so actually hopefully when we come out the other side of this we'll be able to serve service customers quicker than we we had before we went into the crisis We'll have a better, more customer focused sets of products um, and we'll have more ways we can engage with customers and brokers, whether that's um, doing things like video calls that, that we couldn't do previously or having people who work from home, which means they can be more flexible in the way they work. So, you know, longer term, um, I think there's some really good news that will come out of this and, you know, it gives us more capability and flexibility to make sure we can serve brokers and customers better so actually I think long long term it gives us some new capability because so that's the kind of industry lens I'll now look at um, what Kensington have been up, up to and how we've kind of approached that so we have launched our Kensington property valuation last week which is um, an alternative to a physical valuation and the way we've done that is we combine a desktop and an AVM and give it to our property team so we get kind of two inputs so we can assess um, what we think is the right value uh, for that property which is great and there's no charge for that we're covering costs for that and the plan is we'll continue to use that so post-crisis we'll continue to do that we will go back to having physical valuations where we need them typically for higher LTVs, for specialist buy-to-let, HMOs, mobs, new build, those kind of things. 
but we will continue to use that, that valuation method, which will mean for lower risk, lower LTV um, customers and, and, and properties, uh, we'll be able to work really quickly and really cheaply, which is, which is great news. Uh, we have narrowed our product range um, because we're concerned about house prices and also competitor action. Most of our competitors have, have, have really reduced their LTV, so danger for us if we were the only one at 85, 90 is potentially we get kind of flooded with high loan to value business, which we have to, we have to manage our capability in that area and our appetite. Um, so we've capped at 75% loan to value, but we can do the Kensington property valuation, the mix of desktop and ABM 275, which means we can go all the way from application through to completion um, without having to rely on a physical valuation. So we can we can continue um, the pipeline from start to finish and actually get customers all the way through, which is what we're doing currently. And we, we are working through the backlog um, of um, physical valuations that we were waiting to do that we can now do up to 70 ILTV electronically. So that's happening at the moment. In terms of how we've approached criteria, that hasn't really changed. We continue to offer our hero mortgage range, which is um, great because obviously it helps those public sector workers um, in, the, in, in the NHS and the emergency services are doing so much to help us all. So that's brilliant. We have removed our eco mortgage temporarily, and that's mainly because the eco mortgages gives you a thousand pound cash back for the customer um, if they improve their EPC rating within 12 months, which typically means they need to do some kind of building work. We removed that because obviously people aren't able to get building work done currently, so we felt it was unfair to kind of stop the start the clock ticking on a 12 month countdown where they couldn't do any of the work. So we will we'll, we will relaunch that. Um, once the construction industry normalizes, which may be relatively soon, which is great. Um, we've also changed our policy. We have made some policy changes and criteria changes to reflect um, the new circumstances. So for instance, furloughed workers, we didn't have a policy on furloughed workers because no one had heard of a furlough before. So for instance, we will accept customers who are on furlough, we'll accept the furlough income. And if they're getting an employer, employer top up, we'll also accept that. Um, and then we've also been working through how do we treat furlough customers on pipeline, which is as I've just mentioned, um, and what do we do with furlough customers post-crisis. They're all the kind of things we've been working through, and I think we've got a pretty good and very fair policy for um, customers who have been furloughed. Um, and then we're also conducting broker research over the next couple of weeks. Um, so some of you, hopefully we'll talk to some of you guys. Um, to understand how the crisis has been for you, how it's what it's meant for your ways of working and how you interact with your customers and how you work, what tools you're using, so that we can make sure that when, as we come out of the crisis, our proposition and the way we engage you um, suits the way you guys work and suits the way your customers work. So, um, and what we'll do is we'll commit to doing a webinar, another webinar at the end of the month that basically gives you the research findings. We're, we're talking to hundreds of customers and doing some really in-depth work as well with smaller groups of customers um, and brokers. Um, so the, our plan is to communicate that back to you so you can actually see what everybody else is up to and that might help you work out um, your strategy for the coming months and weeks as well. So that really talks then about what Kensington are doing. Francis, should we go on to the Q&A now? Absolutely. Yeah, thank you for that, Craig. Lots of positives there and hopefully something for everyone to take away. So um, we've got some questions that you've pre-submitted. So thank you very much to everyone um, who did that. Hopefully we've answered the questions during the presentation. Um, but if you have any more that we don't cover now, um, feel free to get in touch. So Craig, I'll fire these over to you. Um, which customer segments do you think will be most affected uh, by COVID and the crisis? Um, well, the first thing I'd say is I, I do think there is some areas that have been affected more than others, but I do think it will be temporary. So um, bear, bear that in mind, this is not a kind of a permanent situation, but I do think um, people like self-employed short term will be more infected. Um, obviously, some of those guys are just about to get funding now, which is great, but um, I think they will um, potentially have been more affected in the in the short term. I think people have had to rely on variable income, so normally, which would make up a reasonable proportion of their income on their application. 
it's quite hard at the moment if you are based on if, if um, you get reasonable amounts of commission or tips or bonus um, you know a lot of those will have dried up in the last few months that makes it a bit more difficult in the short term if you're an agency worker or a contractor or a zero hours worker also obviously if you do work in retail hospitality or travel clearly those sectors have been very hit so i'd imagine it will take longer for those um, customers to come back and rebuild the evidence that they'll need to show they've got um, good variable income um, and stable income so i think all those areas will be um, more hit in the short term i think there'll be some areas which will come out more positively so i think construction will bounce back really quickly for instance and actually, if you've worked in food retail, we all know how busy the supermarkets have been, um, or healthcare, or e-commerce, I think those those people will come out really positively. So I think it's kind of patchy in the short term, but you know, all those areas and all those customer groups, I'm sure we'll get back to normal over the longer term. Brilliant, thank you, Craig. And talking about products, which types of products do you think will recover the quickest? Um, I think we'll see new build come out quite quickly. I think there's definitely some pent up demand, bearing in mind there's very few lenders have been able to do um, valuations on new builds. So I think there's a big backlog, um, which would be great. So I think new build will come up quite quickly. And, you know, some of the builders, as you mentioned, have continued to build throughout and a lot of the builders are going back and they'll be very keen to make up that that time. So um, I think new build will come back strongly. I think professional buy to let. Um, I think we've, we've, we've seen evidence of some bargain hunters out there, so I think that will come back quite strongly. Um, Remo has continued to be strong because, again, that's been less reliant on physical valuations. And also, you know, as people are less likely, I think, at the moment to move house, people are more likely to remortgage rather than move. So that means remortgage will be strong as well. Um, although possibly compete with uh, product transfers. Um, and then home movers, I think there's some pent up demand. There's been a lot of chains that have just sat um, there without being able to move so they've kind of frozen they will unthaw and come back to life um, so we might see some home mover pent up demand in the short term but i do think home mover will struggle a bit over the next few months once once the pent up demand has washed through i think there's going to be a bit of a lack of confidence as people wait to see what happens with house prices and also you know people may struggle to do things like have deposits um, to, to buy a new property so that you know the home mover may be, be a bit depressed in the in the medium term brilliant cheers thank you craig and probably our most popular question that we saw several times was how we see the market in the next three months and then in 12 months time okay so i think in the next three months i think it'll be quite patchy um, i think we're going to see limited lender appetite so i don't think you're going to get back to huge provision at the high ltvs um, and with the more riskier products and with the more complex products but i also think you'll see limited customer demand i do think there'll be less people looking to move house than there was kind of pre-crisis um, i think there'll be people with lower deposits so i think there'll be people wanting higher ltvs but i'm not sure they'll be <clears throat> particularly available from lenders um, and i think we'll see increased adverse credit with some people who've kind of struggled through um, the crisis so i think it's going to be a bit patchy i don't think what we'll see is a really quick recovery of full lender provision with um, thousands of new products all at cheap rates and everyone going back to the normal criteria i think it will unwind relatively slowly and like i said i do think there'll be a bit of a hit to um, consumer confidence as well but the good news is i do think in the medium to long term so 12 months onwards i do think we'll be back to normal the long-term fundamentals in the housing market haven't changed we still haven't got enough supply for the demand even if there's a little bit less demand there was there was far too much demand anyway for the supply so i think that will make the, the housing market go back to its normal robust ways um, and on the positive side i think we'll see new customer needs i think we'll see more innovation to address those customer needs um, if you look at what we're doing we've been using this period to transform our business uh, there's no way we're we're going back to normal when things go back to normal we're not going back to normal we're going to take this opportunity to transform the business and really use some of the innovation in terms of the way we can now um, work from home with flexible working with some of the technology we've deployed um, i think we'll actually move our business to a better position than it was pre-crisis and i think other people will be looking to do the same which is great 
Um, and the final thing I'd say is I think this is a really good opportunity over the, the coming months for brokers. There's more and more confused customers. There's been so many changes in lenders and what lenders are lending and what they're lending and their criteria in loan to values and prices. There is so much confusion out there that um, this is a great opportunity for brokers because customers more than ever will need some help through this period. A lot of their circumstances have changed. They really need to understand what that means for them. They really need, really need to understand what opportunities are for them. So like I say, I think it's a very positive time to be a broker um, and there's a lot of opportunity for them, uh, which is great. So actually I think the medium to long term is a really positive time for both lenders, brokers and customers. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Craig. And thank you to everyone for joining us once again. Um, quite a different webinar to our one a few weeks ago. Lots of positives in there, which is uh, really good. Um, as Craig mentioned, we will be hosting another webinar in a few weeks time. And again, if you have any um, suggestions for content, it's all very much appreciated. Thank you very much and have a good rest of your day.